Hello everyone, it is Winged Supernova back again with more Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. And I, uh, I went looking through the evidence to see what the hell I needed to do for uh, presenting this, this connection between Ashley and... It's so weird to call him Ashley. <laughs> Unless he's actually female, and I didn't know, but who knows. Uh, between Ashley Milverton and the Brickmaker Mason, because I was like, wasn't Mason's last name Milverton too? Um, and yes, it seems so. But I'm not sure. Hmm. I'm not sure which statement to pre present this on. It's not that one. Let me go back. Oh. Well, it's probably this one. You know what? I'm gonna fucking full send it, man. Last call. Hey, we're right. Mr. Ashley Milverton. That's... I don't know, man. Tell me, why did you try to hide your former name from the court? Because I haven't gone by that name for years. It means nothing to me. No, I don't think that's the real explanation at all. The truth is, you had a reason to hide that name. Ooh. Can I check his profile real quick? It's only 27. Explain yourself, please, counsel. I have here the notes from the omnibus case, my lord. And as we all know, the victim, the man who we now understand to have been negotiating with Mr. McGilded... Yes, Mr. Mason, the brickmaker. That's right. Only Mason wasn't his surname at all. It was his given name. His full name was Mason Milverton. M Milverton? Do, do you mean to say... Saints alive! Mr. Ashley Milverton. Is it not the case that the brickmaker, Mr. Mason Milverton, was your father? Ugh! I... I don't... As I believe I mentioned earlier, your family history will have been thoroughly checked when you join the civil service. And it really would take no time at all for the court to subpoena those records. Ugh! The truth is, you have been illegally acquiring highly confidential government information and selling it onto McGilded in collaboration with your father. Ah! That was a nice pirouette. The new facts and evidence unveiled by the cross-examination of this witness all come together to reveal the truth. The, the truth, you say? That you collaborated with your father, Mr. Mason Milverton, in illegal dealings with Magnus McGilded. By dint of this music box, you mean, counsel? Yes, stealing information being sent in secret government communications and selling it on to McGilded. Mr. Graydon concocted this elaborate scheme of using two music box discs to encode the information. As, presumably, a safety measure against the information falling into the wrong hands. And a very effective one. I shouldn't have given the scheme any credence whatsoever. But the deal with McGilded went sour and the brickmaker met his end. Yes, but before he was arrested, McGilded managed to temporarily dispose of the stolen disc at the pawnbroker. Then, having learned of the situation, you appeared at Windebanks two days ago in an attempt to recover the two articles McGilded had placed in pawn here. But that attempt failed. One of the, disc, one of the discs was seized by the police, and the other you never found. So that same night, who enlisted the help of the Skulkin brothers and broke into the pawn brokery. This time, determined to recover the second disc. Ark, are you suggesting that the second disc was inside the music box? Eh? We... we never knew nothing about that. On the night that Windebank w that Mr. Windebank was killed... The intruder to the pawnbrokery touched one item, and one item alone. The music box. 
has rather ingeniously demonstrated using the two prints from the security camera indeed. So, the question that naturally begs answering is this. Why was only that one article disturbed? The answer is obvious, because it contained the second disc, which the intruder was desperate to retrieve. Since, if it were to fall into the hands of the police, it would be proof of high treason. Well, Mr. Graydon, do you deny that all of this actually began on that fateful night, two months ago? I... I... I refuse to accept any of this nonsense! Sir. There appears to be blood seeping through the sleeve of your jacket. Uh-oh. What? Ah! Two nights ago, we know that three shots were fired at the scene in, of the crime in Windebank's pawnbroker. One took the life of the pawnbroker himself. One struck the pouch around Mr. Sholmes' waist. And the final bullet... struck the calendar on the wall of the shop, having first pierced the arm of one of the intruders. Mr. Graydon, that wound on your arm that you seem to be trying to hide, it's a bullet wound, isn't it? He's got you now, me old China. Time to call it quits and croak, I reckon. Don't acknowledge, don't acknowledge my presence there under any circumstances whatsoever. Those were my terms, remember? And I paid you handsomely to comply. Clearly I was a fool to think I could trust some common backslum thieves. Fine, I admit it. I was there in Windebanks that night. I paid this pair ten guineas to accompany me. And as you've noticed, I sustained an injury in the course of my adventures. That is all. I admit to nothing more. Stealing government secrets, negotiating with Mr. McGilded. As God is my witness, I am sure I recall nothing of the sort. He's not going to go down without a fight. Not until I can show hard evidence, I suppose. Nevertheless, the defense has now established a crucial fact. Which is... Well, we know that one bullet was fired from each of the two firearms we have in evidence. The bullet from the Skulkin Brothers gun hit the pouch around Mr. Sholmes' waist. And the bullet from Mr. Windebank's gun clearly must have been the one that caught Mr. Graydon on the arm. Indeed it must. We could rule out the possibility that the man shot himself. And that leads us to only one conclusion. Mr. Windebank was shot by a third gun which can only have been fired by the third intruder. Good nurse. That's right, Mr. Graydon. Ugh. The only person who could possibly have shot Mr. Windebank that night is you. Hold it. Who? Oh, it was him. <laughs> You little upstart. You've made a grave mistake when you summoned me here. What? What's that supposed to mean? Yes, as you rightly say, I was there at the pawnbroker's. I did my best to hide that fact, naturally. I had no intention of running, ruining the distinguished career I'd built for myself at the communication station. But did the thought never cross your mind? Did you never consider the possibility? What? What do you mean? What thought? What possibility? The possibility that if I was there at the scene, I may have witnessed the crucial moment. You see... This makes me a key witness in this case, and I have my hands firmly around the neck of your client. What? Are... are you suggesting? I saw it all. I saw the very moment that pickpocket girl pointed the gun at that poor defenseless pawnbroker, and shot him. You... What? Order, order, order! Well, 
It would seem we are finally entering the last act of this theatrical trial. Mr. Graydon. Yes? I trust you are fully, fully aware of the implications here. If it is shown that your claim is false, you will have incriminated yourself as the killer. Oh, I understand fully. Then I must ask you to give your formal testimony once more. You will explain to the court precisely what you saw at the moment the defendant allegedly saw shot the victim. Nothing would give me greater pleasure. The moment of the shooting. While these ruffians were jostling with the broker, I was still near the entrance to the shop. When Windebank threw Nash over the counter, I felt a sharp pain in my arm. I pursued the man, but he shut himself in the storeroom. I could see him through the peephole in the door, though. The accused, in a black coat, shot the man in the back as he was trying to flee to safety. I saw the blood splatter all over that wretched girl. Then she tossed the gun out of the peephole, so I picked it up and made my escape. She tossed the gun through the peephole? Wait, what? How do you toss a gun through a peephole? Good gracious, this is quite extraordinary testimony. You claim, sir, under oath, to have clearly seen the defendant pulling the trigger. Order, order, order! <sighs> oh, oh. I've been speaking a lot, not breathing as much. I so I'm yawning, even though it's 11 in the morning. It wasn't my intention to testify in this way. But neither is, neither is it my intention to be found guilty of a murder I didn't commit. So you see, my hand has been forced. I tell the truth now as an act of self-preservation. Ah, self-preservation, my ass. The truth? Until now, the prosecution was completely unaware of these details. Yes, well, um, sorry about that. Having shot me in the arm, the pawnbroker was then shot in the back by the accused. And as I said, she was showered in his blood. You say the blood splattered all over the accused's coat. Are you sure on that point? Oh yes, quite sure. All over the black overcoat that pickpocket girl was wearing at the time. Really? If a coat could somehow be shown to harbor vestiges of blood, that would be conclusive evidence here. Such an investigation is entirely possible, my lord. What? Only very recently, a German scientist has developed a technique to identify human blood. So here's to true science, not some amateurish detective's dubious foray into the world of chemistry. There's nothing dubious about Hurley's work. Her, his ideas are all sound. Ideas are no use to us here. In science, as in law, theories must be proven before they stand. In Germany, the technique has already been employed in the courtroom as the basis of evidence. Scotland Yard has a small quantity of the chemical reagent used, with your lordship's permission. We could shatter all vestiges of doubt within minutes. Hmm. This doesn't look good, Runa. Why not? Well, we know, don't we? That there's blood all over the front of Ginny's coat. If they test it with their chemicals... Oh, help, you're right. I was forgetting what happened yesterday. I didn't. But the color does not match the color of... Um... The color doesn't match the color of... Uh, the other... The guy's blood. It matches the color of Mr. Mason's blood. Don't move, Jenny. I'm going to shoot. Yeah, it was blue. Or not blue. Uh, it was like pink, wasn't it? Purple. It was purple. But that's not Mr. Windebank's blood. That stain is from two months ago. That's Mr. Mason's blood from when he was stabbed by Mr. McGilded, who was wearing the coat at the time. My 
ignored. The defense objects to the test proposed by the prosecution. Overruled. Lord Van Jeeks makes it so at once. With pleasure, my lord. And while we await the results, the defense may proceed with the cross-examination. Once they find that blood on the overcoat, Gina will be... Counsel! Yes, my lord. Your cross-examination! Of course, my lord. If this cross-examination doesn't go well, if I don't manage to uncover some decisive evidence or a really compelling clue now, I have a very bad feeling about the outcome of this trial. We'll pull it out in some way. Even though I don't know if there's going to be much here. It always ha it always happens this way. Mr. Windebank emerged from the storeroom, I believe. Ringo and Nash were scouring the counter when he suddenly appeared and flew at them. He already had the revolver in his hand. Fortunately, I wasn't too close. I've never been so scared in all my life. Yeah, we're just your regular mild mannered burglars, that's all. We don't like violence. Says the pair who carry a gun. What do you mean when you say you were near the entrance to the shop? I was in the doorway, running my eyes over the shelves of forfeited items. Looking for the music box, of course. The broker went for Nash in the first place. Then Ringo joined in, making it two against one, so I assumed they could handle the situation. But I was wrong. I was trying to help me a little bruv, but the old geezer chucked me over the blooming counter. So I pulled my gun on the old fella, and that soon made him scupper. The pair of you the pair of you were setting upon the poor defenseless pawnbroker together? Shame on you. He had a gun. Sorry, Gov. When Windebank threw Nash over the counter, I felt a sharp pain Pull in the arm. You mean, that's the moment you were shot? Yes, though I didn't immediately realize what had happened, of course. Things crashed to the floor from the counter as the three men were brawling. It was at exactly that moment that it happened, so I didn't hear the gunshot. And the bullet went on to strike the calendar on the wall behind you. So it would appear. When I looked at my arm, I saw it was bleeding badly, so I wrapped my handkerchief around it. Seeing as I couldn't explain what had happened to a doctor, I had no choice but to wait for it to heal. I didn't imagine it would still be bleeding two days later. Did Mr. Windebank intend to shoot you, do you think? Well now, I don't imagine he even noticed I was there, to be honest. Perhaps the gun went off accidentally. Anyway, it didn't, it didn't quite strike home. When I pulled my gun on him, he tried to shove me out of the way. And then he scoped through that door out the back. At which point, what did you do? Hold it! You mean, you chased after him? I don't recall the reason why, but I ran after him to the back of the shop. And what about his peephole in the door that you mentioned? Well, unsurprisingly, the storeroom door is a solid job, made of stout wood. Oh, so that's the people. But there's a small opening in it about head height that lets you see what what's in there from what's what in there from the outside. Yeah, I was thinking about that earlier. I was like, what the fuck? I was like, why the hell? Couldn't we just say that he shot him through the fucking door earlier? Because there's a peephole there, right? And no, there was no evidence and nothing to bring it up, so I just fucking forgot about it. Like, what the hell, game? Not intentionally trying to mislead me. Actually, I should know that, shouldn't I? Yeah, I thought so. I looked through it myself that night. I mean, you could fit a gun through there. I don't know if you could fit a person through there, but you could fit a gun through there. And what about you burgling brothers? Did you see what went on through this peephole as well? No, 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 not likely. I didn't see it under the sword, Gov. I doubt these two buffoons were even aware of the people's existence. So the Skulkin brothers were there, but they didn't see the killing of Mr. Windebank take place. Hmm. Inside the storeroom, I could see the broker and that young girl standing there. The Defendant. Yes, though neither of them noticed that I was looking. 
The girl raised her gun and pointed it straight at the man. And then, what did you see next? Hold it! Hmm. Yes, when the crime was discovered, the defendant was found with a gun in her hand. But that was Mr. Mr. Windebank's gun, from which only a single bullet had been fired. And as we've already established, Mr. Graydon, that bullet was fired at you. Ah, uh, but no, it wasn't the broker's gun that the pickpocket girl had when I saw her. Yes, the bullet from Windebank's gun grazed my arm. And yes, the Skulkin's gun grounded the detective. But this was another gun entirely. A third gun. The broker's gun was not the murder weapon, so th clearly there had to, had to be a third firearm involved. In other words, the accused must have had her own gun with her at the time. Objection. But no other gun was found at the scene. <laughs> Calm yourself, counsel. Sorry? You must consider the events in order. At first I saw the broker and the girl glaring at each other, but then, all of a sudden, the broker turned to run. And it was at that moment that the little gutter rat shot him in the back. A chilling image, I must say. I saw the blood splatter all over that wretched girl. Hold it! All, all over her? Yes, through the peephole, I saw it clearly. Of course, the stains are invisible now, what with the coat being such a dark color. But I assure you, that garment is sullied with the victim's blood. Well, it is sullied with blood, that's for sure. But it's not Mr. Windebank's blood, is it? No, that's right. It's Mr. Mason and Milverton's blood from when Mr. McGillan stabbed him two months ago. It's so annoying. If they'd only accept Hurley's chemical analysis, we could prove that. But they won't, so unfortunately we can't use it as evidence to support our case. Father. Hold it! Hmm. That's interesting. Did, did I hear you correctly? She threw the gun out of the room? That's right. After the broker fell to the floor, she started walking over. Over where exactly? Over where exactly? In the direction of the storeroom door, to where I was watching. Of course, I quickly retreated, and then... The girl dropped the gun through the peephole onto the floor at my side of the, on my side of the door. But why on earth would she do such a thing? I couldn't tell you. Perhaps she was hoping to distance herself from the murder weapon. Without thinking, I went and picked it up. I suppose I was worried about just leaving it there in case any more tragedies took place. So it was you, in fact, who took the third gun from the scene of the crime. Yes, it was yours truly. Hmm. I left the clear up to my lackeys. I left the clear up? The clean up? I left the clean up to my lackeys and left. Clear up? Nope, that's not Miss Bold. We made a bit of a mess around the counter, so Mr. Whistle and Flute Air told us to tidy it up. He thinks he's our bloomin' mum sometimes. Well, I was paying you enough, my god. Oh, oh wrong voice. On that one, too. Tell me, Mr. Graydon, when you left the pawn brokery that night, was it by any chance with the second disc in your jacket pocket? You're yeah, like a bullet of gate, aren't you? <laughs> oh god, what the f fuck is going on here? Excuse Hello? Me. Uh, gentlemen... They're mad at each other for some reason. <sighs> Something wrong, sunshine? That should be my line. You do realize you were just violently shaking, Mr. Skulkin? Blight me, this D's a bit of a hooligan, ain't he? What was he what was going on just now? You saw him! He grabbed me whistle! Why the blazes, he said. Didn't you mention the third gun when we got down to the station? And why didn't you? Cause we didn't know nothing about it. Well, that flaming peephole in the door. Um, sorry about that. I could be prone to losing my rank sometimes. Not hurt, are you? God, 
blimey. See the way he's looking at me? I'm telling you, this ding gives me the willies. That was strange. The inspector doesn't normally get quite as worked up as that. He wouldn't normally grab someone. No, that wasn't like Craigsy at all. He's normally all sweetness and light, no matter what I say to him. Hmm, yes, well, I think you might be a special case, Iris. Well, anyway, that was definitely out of character. Hmm, unfortunately that's it. Until, of course, now, when we get the overcoat. This is not good. Re requesting your lordship's permission to interrupt the cross-examination! Explain yourself, officer. I have the results of the test that was ordered earlier, my lord. Ah, the blood on the accused's overcoat. Thank you, officer. Very well. The cross-examination is hereby temporarily suspended. I presume you have no objection, counsel. Um, no, my lord. Unfortunately, I wish we had an objection. Well, there you have it. The report, please, Inspector. Yes, sir. Traces of human blood were found on the overcoat of the defendant, Miss Gina Lestrade. From the extent of the stains, it would appear that they were the result of spattering following a gunshot wound. End of report. Oh, a gunshot wound, huh? Huh. Because that's different. Hmm. Was a thorough autopsy done on Mason Milverton's death? Are we saying that potentially he was shot and then McGilded stabbed him afterwards with his own knife to cover up the gunshot wound? Hmm. That would be weird, but that's the only thing that really makes sense if that was actually a gunshot wound. Goodness me! The gunshot wound part is the scary part. Damn. Double axle, huh? See, what did I tell you? Objection. No, the blood on that coat is not Mr. Windebanks. What on earth makes you say that, Council? The coat originally belonged to Magnus McGilded. Just before his coat was deposited at Windebanks, McGilded had fatally stabbed Mr. Mason Milverton. So the blood on that overcoat is the blood of the brickmaker from the omnibus case. Objection! Well, the dead cannot speak. Isn't that right, my Nipponese friend? Sorry? Two months ago, in this very courtroom, did you not argue fervently for Ms. McGilded's innocence? And yet, now that the man is dead, you brand him as a murderer? Your conduct shatters any shred of respect you may have earned for yourself in this country. How so? I did my job. I, def I defended my client. Ah, but, but that was... I call it a ballet disgrace. Treachery, that's what it is. Hmm, how to determine whether the blood on that coat is two months old or not? Even a stereoscope couldn't help the answer to that problem pop out. It can't be done. But, but, we've used Mr. Sholmes' especially formulated- Mr. Sholmes is a detective, not a chemist. Would you put such faith in a chemical formula devised by me, for example, when I'm a communications officer? I healed out a Biroski to starving boy, and he ran away crying. Wow, what? Hold on, what? Can we get more story on that one? Herlock Sholmes is barely more than a figment of the public's imagination. His name carries no weight in this courtroom. No weight at all. What if I said it was developed by Iris Wilson over here then? How could you say that? Victory is sweet indeed. This proves that my testimony is the whole truth from start to finish. How do you arrive at such a conclusion, sir? As the witness has said, the accused's coat was spattered with the blood of the victim. The only way Mr. Graydon could possibly have known that fact is if he saw it happen. In other words, his testimony is solid and the conclusion is singular. It was the accused who shot the victim in this case. That 
is the whole truth. This is going to be a tough one to get out of. We're going to need Herlock to show up ASAP. My lord! Been a long battle this one, but this old war horse has something to say now, if you please. Mr. Foreman. As of this moment, sir, the squadron has reached its final decision. Ready, men? All for one now. Sir! Guilty. 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 Do we have to do a third summation examination? Because we don't really have anything for this one, unfortunately. Well, it would appear the ladies and gentlemen of the jury have reached a unanimous verdict. The defense has consistently failed to unpick this witness's testimony. Here's to any attempt you may make at unpicking the jurors' decisions being equally successful. Uh, uh, I don't believe it. After I've come so far, how is it all unraveling on me so fast? We need her lock. We need her lock. Hey, guess what? Ah, <laughs> oh, boy, can I call him or what? Uh, how very distressing to be held in such low esteem. What? <laughs> He's been the bailiff this whole time? I gave him such a stupid voice. That's great. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Naruhoto? Officer? You've delivered the report now. That will be all, thank you. It occurs to me with some regularity, Mr. Naruhoto, that scientific truths are determined not by science, but by none other than the human mind. I... I know that voice. Am I going mad? Uh, ah! Mr. Sholmes! What? What is the meaning of this? <laughs> order, order, order! <laughs> what business do you have here, Detective? The last I heard, you were recuperating in hospital. Oh, well, as well I would be, had I not been set upon an errand. What errand? Hurley! It's really you! You're awake at last! Yes, good day, Iris. I appear to be rather late to rise. My apologies. Now, my lord, if you will hum if you will humor me. In what manner, sir? I have something of great importance I wish to give the young lawyer over there. I need no more than five minutes. Would you be so kind as to spare us the time? Hmm. What say you to this, Lord Van Jakes? This trial has taken many hours of the court's time. I've been spent so long already. Exactly. I've been spent so long already. We don't want to go witnessing in any more precious time. As I was saying, having spent so long already, it would seem churlish to deny the defense a mere five minutes. Uh! Very well then. Counsel, you are five minutes. My dear fellow, I apologize for my tardy arrival. Mr. Sholmes, are you alright now? Ha! <laughs> alright, I'm all wrong. Sorry? I've only just managed to summon the strength to stand, man. I asked the judge for five minutes. But I fear that even that may prove too much for me. Pray forgive me should I pass out. Um, let's make this discussion as short as possible. Hurley, that pla this place is full of idiots! God damn! <laughs> None of them can see how wonderful your chemical and blood analysis is. Ah, well, that concoction of mine was really just a bit of sport to assist me in my investigations. I never took the trouble to refine it for appraisal by scientific community. An oversight on my part. Right. Modesty? Surely not. But enough of that. I'm here to give you this, my dear fellow. What's that? A lavender furoshiki wrapping? A leaving present from Miss Susato. From Miss Susato. If possible, matters were to be settled without me giving you this. 
Those were her instructions when she asked me to do her this favor. I... I don't understand. Miss Susano foresaw today's events, I believe. She knew that the culprit would attempt to escape justice by means both devious and underhand. And that you, Mr. Naruhoto, fighting fairly as you are, will Fighting as you are wont to do, would find yourself in considerable peril. At, this ver at that very moment of crisis, you were to be given this small parcel. Those were the dear lady's instructions. A leaving present from Susato-san? Whatever could it be? Oh, interesting. What is this? Oh! It's, it's the machine I made! Ah. Yeah, it's supposed to create doors. Cat doors, specifically. Meow. Look, I use this. It's my latest invention. What? What is that? I call it the cat flapper mat. It can make a cat flap for a little furry friend like Waggy in seconds. What's Susie up to? Miss Susato muttered the following words before she left. I'm a failure. I don't deserve to be a judicial assistant. What? Didn't she say something like that? Yeah, when she left you. You really are the best judicial assistant in the world. Well, that's extremely flattering. But I'm sorry to say... That I've been a complete failure. Whatever did she mean by that, Mr. Sholmes? That night, when you left Windebanks in pursuit of the thieves, Miss Susano made use of this contraption for a certain purpose. That is your answer, dear fellow. Not, not at all cryptic, then. So she did something while we weren't in... Huh. So she made something. She made a flap of some kind when we weren't in... I gotta remember the, the chain of events then. Did we run after them first before going to check to see what was in the back room? That might be the case. If that's the case, then she's the one who made the flap on the door and it wasn't there when we came into the, when we came into the room immediately. That's interesting. Ah, ha, ha, that's very interesting. Not not at all cryptic, then. So Sato-san used this cat flap -a mat that night? But why? Well, she used it so that she could look into the back room. She probably tried to open it herself. Your five minutes is over. Ah! We're out of time already? Well, we pretty much got everything that we needed to say, said, so that's interesting. I'm grateful to you for affording us that brief recess, Mr. Reaper. I need no thanks, Detective. After all, the die is cast. Hmm, is it really? The jurors are unanimous in their leanings. No doubt my learned friend will consider a summation examination. But any attempt to alter the verdict now would be utterly futile. I wonder... Mr. Naruhoto! Yes? The rest is down to you, dear fellow. What is your plan? The rest is down to me? I need to be careful here. If I make a wrong move, the trial will end. Badly. My lord, the defense requests... Oof. I feel like it's further cross-examination here, simply because I remember in his testimony, he stated that he looked through the peephole in the thing, but it wasn't made when he was there. So I feel like further cross-examination is the way to go here. feel like that's the way to go here but we're gonna make our decision in the next episode because this one's running up on 
40 minutes. So yeah, that's going to be it for this one. If you like it, like, subscribe, and in the next episode, oh boy, we are pursuing the finale of this case. I am very excited for it. I will see you guys then.